So it's money that you've already got inside the general fund and we're just asking them to get it placed back into our account. That's 78. Okay. 19. Um, does somebody have a question? 79.19, same thing. Um, it is overtime. Whenever our project port people go out, uh, it requires overtime for us to maintain our minimum staffing. And so uh, this is money that we have spent out of our overtime account to cover the, over, uh, the project port people. And they reimbursed us to the tune of $3,760.11. And it needs to be uh, placed back into our overtime account from the general fund that we placed it in. And then the thirdly uh, is the same thing. We had sold a uh, piece of equipment to Whitehall Fire, uh, an auto pulse, and then we also had spent some um, money for Project Fort. And we had this money, we placed it in the general fund. All these accounts are getting low, and we're asking to take that money that we've already received and place it back into our account that we spent it from. And that's those three. Okay. Um, any questions? Mr. Hall, how many readings? Uh, I'm asking for one reading, please. So you're asking for suspension. I am. One off the knees. And uh, is Mr. Woodyard your second? Yes. Thank you. Okay. I got him if I have to. Uh, next on the agenda is Resolution 81-19 and 82-19. Mr. Woodyard. Okay, uh, Mr. Nixon was going to be here, but I think I can handle it. The first one, uh, 80, to 80, you say 81 or 81-19. Yeah, 81. 81-19, uh, um, this is uh, an application to High Environmental uh, Department in order to uh, uh, gain some a loan for the water pollution uh, control and uh, this is a uh, uh, interest-free loan that we can gain and that's the purpose of this one and the second one this is again for our sewer projects on Forest Rose and uh, Fifth Avenue Fifth Sixth Avenue and Forest Rose there and uh, this is again authorization for the service director uh, to go out for bids for these projects Okay, any questions? And I got another one coming too. Yes. <laughs> and um, how many readings? Okay, let me back off again. Uh, we're going to, uh, the first one we're going to ask for uh, suspension uh, because we need to get that application in. Uh, and my second one that will be Mr. McDaniels. The second one we're going three readings and Mr. Hall will be my second on that one. And the third one? Which is 83-19, resolution authorizing the service director to enter in, into an engineering agreement for Lawrence uh, Street water pollution upgrade. And uh, this is one that we've talked about. Uh, we felt it would come in somewhere in the neighborhood, somewhere between 20 and 25 million. Uh, it's, we're now looking at the aspect they feel that it, it should come in somewhere around the area of 21 million. So a little bit better than we had hoped closer to uh, the bottom line of what we thought we'd have to go than the top line. Uh, again, this one will go two readings and uh, Mr. McDaniels will be my second. Any questions on resolution 83-19? I, I might mention uh, that one of the reasons that you're seeing so many of these things come here in uh, the last meeting and this meeting and with limited number of readings or suspension uh, we tend not to meet only once in July and we're finding that's putting a uh, uh, problem with our department heads and everything getting material because a lot of things happen over the summer and I think at one time it was done because that way you could plan vacations but as we can look around most of us if we need to go on vacation uh, Mr. Stoughton's gone tonight and, and uh, we don't necessarily have are able to plan our vacations in that July period anyway. So we may need to look next year at the possibility of meeting twice again in July. And it is a possibility that there's some low 
legislation that may come up yet this month that we may have to ask for a special meeting. So the council needs to think of that next year when they're setting up their schedule. We really need to go to in July, same as all the other months. That's my soapbox. Thank you, Mr. Woodyard. Okay, uh, next resolution is 84-19, Mrs. Bobbitt. Thank you very much. I believe we have a superintendent here tonight that's gonna to speak on this. Mr. Thart, thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Um, this uh, legislation, we knew this was going to come back or come up in 2019. It was actually part of my uh, revenue proje projections. We've done this for the last two years in a row. Uh, we just weren't sure at what point we would bring this forward. Uh, seven, there's 13 line items on this legislation that's going through. Seven of the 13 uh, were short. We knew that going into January when. Uh, the actuals at the end of the year actually came through larger than the projected when we built the budget back in October. Uh, that would be telephone and uh, labor uh, of maintenance, uh, lighting maintenance, utilities maintenance, utilities pools, contract labor, seniors, um, and incidentals and recreation. So that left us with 13 other items that we spent a little different in the beginning of this year than we have in years past. Uh, sick leave buyout, we had somebody that reached that plateau that they could start buying out part of their sick leave. That's one of them. Programs and advertising, uh, that line is new for us. We had no idea what we were going to need into that one. Uh, we just created that one in late 18. Um, parks improvement, that 10500 uh, we've already transferred money out of that line item into other lines to try and get them through to this point. That's why that number is in that line. Um, incidental swims, we've worked with a lot of replacement of old equipment. Uh, that's where that line comes in. Olivedale Contractual, um, as you know, we created the Health and Fitness Center this year, and we used a little bit more there than we anticipated. So that's kind of where that's gone. And uh, incidentals in recreation. Uh, again, our recreation side, we have created more programs, 19, than we've seen in a lot of years in the Parks Department. Uh, we've had more children playing. Uh, we increased our soccer program, as you know, by about 150 children this year. That's t-shirts, that's more umpires, that's more games, that's more lining of fields. Uh, but that's carried over into a lot of other recreations that we do. Uh, those recreations at, at Alley Park and throughout the park system, we've just seen uh, this past weekend, we had a, a family fun day that would usually attended by 40 to 60 people, 300 showed up massive numbers of what's attending programs in our park system these days, which is great. It's, uh, it's a testament to what we're doing on the programming side. It's a testament to what we're doing on the advertising side and getting the information out to all of these entities that, you know, can enjoy parks programs. Um, still in front of us yet. Uh, and, you know, if it wasn't for this kind of stuff, we wouldn't need to replenish. But we've still got the pumpkin hike, Santa in the park, pancake breakfast, fall soccer, which is larger typically than spring soccer in front of us. <laughs> We started doing our own photos at the, uh, in our soccer program, uh, which is money we never expected to spend, but we're making about a $4,000 revenue from that money that we're spending. So it takes money to make money, and that's exactly the case in point here. No Limits Athletics, uh, again, a bigger program than we ever thought would happen. All numbers across parks are up. Um, flag Football, a new program for us. Again, it takes money to make money. Uh, just increased participation, new programs, which are a new revenue source for this park system also. Uh, our unencumbered, unexpended, we're better this year than we were in 18, better than we were in 17, and we're better this year than we were in 16. So we're on a four-year high right now as far as the way we're spending money and the way we're saving money and the way we're making money. Um, I think we've done a very good job of managing what we, what we had, and we've had the same thing for the last 32 years. Any questions for Mr. Tharp? Mr. Just a Woodrow? comment. Uh, and I think you're doing an excellent job. I think the parks in the last couple of years have really uh, improved what it's offering to the community and everything. I do feel that uh, in some of these areas, uh, and they're definitely needed, but uh, if you knew about them in January, I think you need to plan uh, a little better ahead rather than coming to us in mid-season after you, you know you're going to be short. As soon as you know you're short, please let us know. and, and uh, we can make transfers when we need to and everything. But other than that, I think you're doing a good job. Thanks. Mrs. Bobbin? I want you to reassure me that the lighting services 
mm -hmm. are not for the lighting for the mountain. No, no, they're not. I just wanted to reassure everybody. <laughs> Thank you. No, that no, they're not. That's just a one of those utility costs that came in at the end of the year, actual higher than the projected. Okay. And I am going to ask for a uh, suspension this evening. Thank you. you guys are killing thanks. it. Thanks. I've got one additional comment. I just want to uh, thank Superintendent Tharp for this information, but also, as you know, I worked for the Parks Department for a period of time. Some of these programs just took off, and, uh, and they were introduced, and, and then all of a sudden you've got hundreds of people that want to participate. Well, there's a cost to get that off the ground, and those costs are often unanticipated, and, uh, but the programs support themselves. Kickball, flag football, they all support themselves, but we have to wait for that money to come in. So this is an effort to fund those programs going forward. We'll recoup much of that money after the programs actually are activated and playing. Exactly right. Thank you. Yeah. And Mrs. Baba, who's your second? I'm sorry. Mrs. Teener. Okay. Any other questions on 84-19? Okay. Uh, next one is 86-19. And um, this is a resolution uh, to appropriate from the General Fund 101. Um, it is for legal publications associated with the past CRA resolution. I don't have any other details other than that. Um, Are there any questions? And do we need to pass it tonight? Two readings. Okay, and Mr. McDaniel will be the second. It's two readings. Okay, um, we had two resolutions um, that are walk-ins tonight. Uh, everyone on council should have received an email prior to the meeting. Uh, there should be a printout. You didn't get it? No, it had to be forwarded to me late this afternoon, so I didn't have time to read it. Okay. Um, get to it here. Um, okay, so resolution 87-19, uh, this is a resolution declaring the necessity of an election on the question of approving the passage of an ordinance to amend sections 183.012, 183.013, and 183.02 of the codified ordinances of the City of Lancaster, Ohio. Uh, in order to increase the city income tax rate by 45 hundredths of 1%, so 0.45% from the current rate of 1 and 75 hundredths percent, so 1.75, to a rate of 2 and 20 hundredths percent, 2.20 percent, beginning January 1st, 2020, to specify the allocation of funds from such tax and declaring an emergency. So I just want to make sure that everybody is clear that this is a resolution to pass an ordinance to put on the ballot for November an income tax increase to 2.20%. It will have three readings. And I am the sponsor since Mr. Choten is not here and Mr. McDaniel is the second. Do we have any questions? Mrs. Tina. On something like this, should we have a public hearing or anything like that? I did ask that question and I was told no, there is no need for a public hearing. No, because, oh, sorry. Go the ahead. resolution of necessity is just the, the mechanism to put it to the voters. So you don't have a public hearing because you're actually voting. Just because of the percentages in that, yeah. on that. <clears throat> Mrs. Bobbitt. Did you say, uh, excuse me, did you say three readings? Three readings. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. President Ohl. 
Thank you. I'll just note that in order to achieve the three readings by the deadline of when this needs to be submitted to the Board of Elections, and in an effort to give the law director's office a little bit of margin between that third reading to get everything certified and over to them, we have had three members who have requested a special meeting to address this and the next resolution that we're going to look at. That is July 29th. So please mark your calendars during a special meeting. Only those items which have been specifically stated can be considered. So during that meeting, we will hear the third reading and expect action on 87 and 88, which we're getting ready to discuss. So please mark your calendars for July 29th at 6.30 right here in council chambers. Okay. The next resolution is 88-19. And this is a resolution declaring the necessity of an election on the question of approving the passage of an ordinance to amend sections 183.012, 183.013, and 183.02 of the codified ordinances of the City of Lancaster, Ohio, in order to increase and replace the city income tax rate for parks and recreation from the current rate of one and one half tenth of one percent, so 0.15 percent tax for the period January 1st, 2018 through December 31st, 2022 on earnings and income to a rate of 20 hundredths percent, 0.20 percent, continuing beginning January 1st, 2020 and declaring an emergency. This again is a finance piece and I'm going to ask Mr. Tharp to come up if he can, can you shed any additional light or Randall? Yes, uh, thank you. Um, on this piece, I guess that what I need to tell you right now is we're still, um, in order that we could get a piece for the parks uh, introduced, um, I anticipate that we'll have uh, some amendments with this. It's written right now. Um, as the park board would like to see it passed. We just are still doing some legal research um, to see if we can approach it in this particular fashion. So um, uh, on this right now, it's you know basically to go from a 0.15 temporary five-year uh, parks levy to a permanent or continuing um, 0 0.20 um, parks levy um, starting January 1 of 2020. But one of our issues is we don't know that we're still trying to figure out if, if there's a mechanism that you can actually repeal a current existing temporary income tax. So as we research that, this may change, but I wanted to get it before council so that um, we wouldn't have to have yet another special meeting to introduce it <coughs> to whatever at a later date. So. Okay. Uh, this again will be three readings and um, as on 87, I will be the sponsor and Mr. McDaniel will be the second since Mr. Stoughton is not here. Any additional questions? Yes, Mr. Gould. Thank you, Ms. Downer. So I'll just note on uh, this piece and the previous piece, obviously the mayor is out this evening uh, recovering from uh, procedure and will be back in the office both for our July 15th meeting and our July 29th special meeting. And I expect that for the previous piece we'll have robust discussion once he returns. You saw his email, I hope, um, and uh, he'll be ready to engage in that discussion once he gets back. Uh, the same is true as we flesh out the parks uh, the parks issue and uh, not only Mr. Tharp but I believe members of the parks board will be in attendance at previous meetings as well to have that discussion so just uh, we're introducing tonight so that we can work our way through this will give you time to review read the legislation consider and uh, we'll have two more opportunities to discuss before action is taken thank you thank you any other questions on 88-19 um, any departmental updates? Uh, Chair, members of council, Mr. Woodyard, I apologize for being late, nine tenths of an inch of rain at <laughs> four o'clock. Yes. A half hour period has not been good. So uh, I don't know if I need to cover anything, Jerry, on 81, 82, or 83. We managed 19. to hit those without you. 
Well, they're all pretty critical pieces of legislation, so I'll make sure if there's any questions that I am here to answer them now or I think we're asking for one suspension tonight, so I'll make sure I'll be around through that vote. So far, only two WIBs, and not bad when you consider, let's say we added the water plant, nine-tenths of an inch rain in less than 30 minutes, and we're at 32.54 for the year, typical 18, 1982, and last year we thought it was wet, we had 29.54 at this time, uh, January through June so far this year we have 32.54 so three inches more than last year so I keep hearing this is El Nino year hotter drier summer summer started recently so I'm ready for hot and dry so <laughs> and hopefully we get those two things Mr. Mr. Nixon how many uh, wet basements have you had reported at this point for tonight to well uh, totally so far well, totally, we've had very few That's why throughout all these storms, and tonight we've had two on Forest Rose, neighbors on Forest Rose. We had like three last week, didn't we, or something? Yes. In River Valley Highlands, knock on wood, uh, we've seen significant decrease in the amount of flow coming out of that tributary, and uh, I just jinxed myself, but no whibs to this point from, from that tributary. And and council might remember we spent some money on River Valley Highlands uh, to fix up. Uh, one of the things that that's helped us is the amount of water that we've had to treat at our plant has significantly dropped, and that's a savings. And over, it won't be long till we will actually have saved everything we put into it. It's roughly a penny a gallon. Penny a gallon, and we've in transport and treat costs. Yep. So um, we greatly reduce the uh, the amount of flow coming out of there. So there there will be a payback on that rather quickly, especially if it keeps raining like this. Yeah. Okay. So any questions on those? Not? Thank you, Mr. Nixon. Thank you. Good evening. Um, I just wanted to do a quick transit update for you. I'm hoping that some of you, or most of you, received an email I sent out today. Um, in regard to the Easy Fare and the Neo Ride program that you had approved about a month ago for us. Um, this is taking off uh, quicker than we expected, and uh, the Neo Ride program is actually applying for a grant on behalf of all of the transit systems who were included um, to go ahead and purchase the Easy Fare system. I'm hoping that you guys got to see it. It's a really neat and easy way for us to do electronic fare payments in our bus systems. And so for a small rural transit in a, in a rural setting, this is really big and a huge opportunity for us. Um, when I had come to you last time, this was again kind of new. We were just trying to get involved because we thought it was a great opportunity for us, a cheap way to get electronic fares in our systems. Um, out of the 60 transit systems in the state of Ohio, we already have 12 transit systems that are going to um, implement the same exact fare system, and we actually have uh, about five more that are currently looking at it. So when you think about it, I mean, from a transportation standpoint, we may end up with over 30% of our transit systems with the same exact fare so that anyone can go from city to city, county to county, and have the same exact fare process on their phone. Um, so for us, that's a really big deal because we have a lot of people that either go into Pickaway County, Franklin County, Licking County, or they ride the GO bus to go to Athens. Um, so that's a really good opportunity for us. Um, the one thing I do want to say, though, is I received an email today that the legislation that you had approved, um, which allowed us to do the NEO ride program, they are looking at amending that legislation because we actually have some systems now in Kentucky that want to do this fair payment system with us. Um, the original legislation that we approved said it was transit agencies in the state of Ohio. So there's a possibility that we're going to need to amend that so that it says the state of Ohio and other states that are interested in becoming part of the same fair payment program. So just wanted to preface and let you know that. Um, as I stated in the email, we are absolutely looking for feedback on this. So if you watch the video and you have feedback, I would love to know more from you. Um, and then Mr. Schoonover asked if I would just touch on our temporary resolution 8519. Again, I had sent out an email last week. Um, this is a mandated policy for our transit system for us to receive that federal grant that we receive every year. It's a zero tolerance drug and alcohol policy for our staff, 
in any safety sensitive position as well as any of the contracted staff so the drivers that are through our current contractor ride right um, this is a mandate for us um, I had sent through all the strike throughs that ODOT asked us to change and exactly what they asked us to change it to. Um, so if you have questions, I'm more than happy to answer those. If not, I do like my job on some days and I would appreciate keeping it. So I would ask for you to consider approving that so that I can get it back. Any questions? Oh, I'm sorry. Mr. This Hall. is a comment on another issue. I've recently become aware of some data that suggests here in the state of Ohio that with a total adult population of around 8.5 million that we have a, uh, approaching a million adults in the state of Ohio that have lost their privilege to drive. Um, and I'm wondering if there's been an analysis um, here in the city of Lancaster of what percentage of our adult population uh, does not have the privilege to drive and what percentage of that population we serve with public transit. So. I don't have that information with me. Um, I do know like the older, older adult alternatives, um, they have done that. And there are several nonprofit groups throughout Central Ohio that have gone county to county, looking at the contiguous counties that have that information. I just don't have, I don't have it memorized, but I can get that information to you. That, that would be helpful, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, on your legislation 8519, uh, I noticed that uh, we're suspending on that. Is that because we, it, you have to have it right away? Is that? Uh... Yes, the state would like it approved. It, so this, you had already approved the original. Okay, this um, is just new. Yeah, you had already approved the original policy that's 80 some pages long. They're just asking us to approve the changes. So when we did the original legislation, the way it was written was that I had uh, the authorization to update any attachments. And unfortunately, because the federal government changed our testing thresholds, it didn't change just the attachments, it changed the actual body. Um, and they wanted us to change the names that were referenced in the policy. So they're very minimal changes. Okay. Um, so if possible, we would like suspension just because they would like to get that turned around and back. They file that to the FTA showing that we are compliant with our drug and alcohol policies. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Good evening. I would just want to give a little update or uh, I guess a heads up uh, for. So who are you? Uh, I'm Mitch Nolan. I'm the city engineer. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, anyhow. Uh, just trying to give an update or a heads up to all of you as to uh, in the July meeting, July 15th meeting, um, I'm hopeful to have uh, an ordinance prepared. This is the ordinance we've been working on for quite some time in regards to the right-of-way ordinance. Uh, it is a lengthy document and I'm sure you guys aren't going to want to read every word of it because if I read it, I could fall asleep as well. But uh, regardless of that, it's something that we've been working through over the past uh, it's, it seems to be years uh, when, when, uh, when this started, um, but uh, I, I guess what I would like to uh, just make yourself aware of is when this gets introduced, there's going to be a lot of interests that are involved in this right-of-way ordinance. There are so many interests in the right-of-way in terms of uh, electric, you know, our own interests for our own utilities the wireless type people, Verizon Wireless and, uh, and AT&T and all the different interests. I'm sure that some representatives from those companies will be uh, voicing their opinion when this gets introduced. So um, uh, I, I just want to make you aware of that. I've already been contacted uh, by AEP, AT&T and Verizon Wireless. So um, this is something that is uh, important to me. I think it's important to our own internal utility departments in, in terms of trying to control the right-of-way. Uh, and, and just to give you a little bit of background, over the past several weeks I've been meeting with all of our internal utility departments, uh, kind of vetting out all the different issues. And obviously a, a, a big issue that we have internally is we just don't have enough space for all the things that occur in these corridors that we're trying to push down through there. It's, it's not anymore, it's not wastewater, water, and electric that we're dealing with. We're dealing with so many other types of utilities uh, in our right-of-ways and everything is hard, it's compacted, it's tight, and we're trying to do our projects and everyone needs a, 
a piece of that ground. And uh, something that has become apparent is that we need wider right-of-ways. So as part of that whole process, we're trying to make some changes internally in our own policies to make things bigger. And that's not going to solve our problems today. Uh, it would probably, this is, these are decisions we would be making today that will affect uh, our children and our children's children down the road as our city grows, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 years from now, having that space for these, all these different things that just keep getting jammed into our, our right of ways to, uh, to transport goods, information, gas, water, sewer, all those things. So um, uh, July 15th, I'm hopeful to have that prepared and uh, uh, for you guys to review and then obviously uh, it, we would go three readings for that. So just wanted to give an update on that. Mrs. Bobby. <clears throat> Thank you, Mitch, for working on this. <clears throat> Excuse me. You mentioned we a couple different times. So that's you, Randall's office, and then don't we have an outside um, law firm that's also working on this and working with other communities also? Yeah. Yeah, it, and this is th this shouldn't be a surprise to the utility companies that we would be dealing with uh, from the outside. Uh, this is this has been very similar types of uh, legislation. Uh, ordinances have been passed in other communities like Marysville, Kettering. Uh, uh, various, a lot of them seem to be a lot over in the Dayton area. A lot of those suburbs and things like that. So. Uh, it shouldn't be something new that utilities would would be uh, subject to. They've been dealing with this for years, but um, you know it's just it's new in our town. So, I would just add to that that uh, you know the reason we chose this firm to help us is because uh, uh, this is a particular area of expertise for them, and as Mitch has stated, they've done it all around the state. So. Um, you know what we're doing isn't new um, I think what's new is that um, it's now it'll be regulated the activities within the right-of-way will be regulated which is what we need which is that's new to the utilities so but they're complying with it all over the state so it's not unique I should say okay Mr. Uh, yeah in uh, recalling all of the discussion on that before it's not just the width of the right of way, but weren't there height issues also? And is anything resolved on that? I think it went up 150 feet or more. Yeah, that it was. That was when, um, if you can remember back when we put in a, mo a moratorium uh, back during Senate Bill 331, uh, then that that's when we had this lawsuit between there was about 50 communities within the state that uh, filed suit with the state of Ohio. That was, uh, we won that one and then came about, I think it was House Bill 478, and that's what gave the shorter uh, height limitations on these types of, like the small cell technology is what you're referring to. So what are the height restrictions there? 45 feet. And, and it was, at one time, we had applications for 185 feet in our right of way. I knew it was up there. Yeah. Mr. Woodger. Uh, will this uh, require a public hearing? I do. Or should we, even if it isn't required? I, I'll check on that. I don't know at this time, but I don't believe so, no. Okay. Okay. Anything else for Mitch? Okay, thank you. Are there any other departmental updates? Okay, I'm going to turn the meeting over to Mr. Ohl for chance Thank you, Ms. Danauer. We do have a couple of things to work our way through very quickly. Ms. Woody was up here and addressed already temporary resolution 85-19 that deals with the zero tolerance drug and alcohol testing policy that we already adopted that we're updating here. Mr. Schoonover, since we've already heard a discussion on this, uh, the goal is to suspend tonight? Yes. And who is your second? Uh, Mrs. Bobby. Any further comments or questions on 8519? If not, then I'll just take you to uh, the two new ordinances that we have tonight, uh, which are temporary ordinance 11 and 12. Note that these are connected 
with the income tax issue. So one for the city income tax increase and one for the parks increase. These ordinances will be introduced tonight. They will uh, have the three readings as well. And then you'll note that what we do in these situations, if the temporary resolutions pass, then these ordinances will be tabled until after the election, at which time city council will take action on them. And so these will be introduced tonight uh, by Ms. Downauer with a second by Mr. McDaniel. Any questions on these ordinances that we're introducing? Ms. Teener. I did have a question. It's my understanding when the parks had their meeting regarding the levy that the income tax was talked about in the parks meeting? The income tax levy was talked about in the parks meeting? I believe it came up, yes. I, can you do that? Because I thought it was supposed to be about the parks levy and not the income tax. Well, there was no action taken on it. And the discussion was tangential to the conversation about an additional tax and whether we were combining or separating them out. And so you can't discuss one without the other when you're discussing the combination of the two taxes. And it was decided that they would remain separate, which is why we have the two distinct pieces of legislation tonight. That was merely an informational item. There was not discussion on it as there would be when it was introduced. It simply came up as an aside to the actual piece that was being discussed. I was just under the impression since it was a special meeting, it was about the parks levy. It was about the parks levy, and the only action that was taken was on the parks levy. The city income tax issue had been discussed by administration and resolution had been in the works well prior to the parks meeting. Further discussion on these ordinances? If not, then I will toss it back to the chairwoman. Thank you, Mr. President. Well, are there any other items? I can't talk. Are there any other items for finance? Okay, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. I'll second. We are adjourned. The regular meeting of Lancaster City Council will begin promptly at 645. <laughs>no place like Lancaster, Ohio and Fairfield County and like you I am proud to call them home. As a longtime resident of Lancaster and graduate of Lancaster High School this community is important to me and I want to provide superior customer service, professionalism, integrity and honesty at the Connor Insurance Agency. I am committed to supporting local programs and projects through my volunteer work and board membership with several organizations. It has been a great honor to work with all the first responders throughout Lancaster, Fairfield County, and the state of Ohio to put on Kids and Cops Day, to be a part of Shop with a Cop alongside the Lancaster Police Department and JFS, and to help Lancaster Public Education Foundation raise funds to support our local public schools and teachers. These men and women work hard to protect and support our community, and I would like to take this moment to say thank you for all they do. My goal as a business owner and insurance agent is to provide my clients with the most appropriate services and coverage for their needs at a competitive rate. As an independent agent, I have several carriers to choose from so I can customize your insurance coverage to fit your needs and desires. I strive to make sure there are no gaps in your coverage that could be harmful and just as important that you are not overinsured. I look forward to serving your insurance needs now and in the future. At Connor Insurance, we are here to serve you by protecting what is important to you. Please contact my office at 740-654-2848 for a full list of services and carriers or visit my website, connorinsuranceagency.com. Almost everyone needs a car to get from point A to point B, and many families have two or more cars. At Carriage Company, located at 1031 North Memorial Drive in Lancaster, we specialize in hard-to-find used cars. 
Due to the recent success of the new car market, there is a large inventory of used cars available for resale. We can help you find exactly what you're looking for. With over 15 years at this location and 27 years experience in the business, we are the best place to go to find your next car, truck, van, or SUV. As a member of the Better Business Bureau, we are a Carfax Advantage dealer and offer great financing rates through a local area bank with warranties available on most vehicles. We know your time is valuable, so we take special pride in making sure that you get what you came for at a price that you can afford. Come into the carriage company and check out our sweet deals. Stop by today and let us help you or visit us online at carriagecompany.com. Great! Hi, I'm Brandon. I'm a recovering addict. For 10 of the last 11 years, I've been struggling with addiction, homelessness, incarceration, and just loneliness. However, since getting clean this past year, I've accomplished more than I have in those 10 years combined. After attending outpatient counseling services, inpatient counseling services, living a sober living house, and attending 12-step meetings, I've been able to regain control of my life and begin to achieve goals I've always dreamed of. Addiction can destroy lives in many ways. Whether you need help with childcare or financial assistance, everyone deserves a new beginning. Recovery supports are just that, supports for recovery. My life mattered, your life matters too. This message is brought to you by the Fairfield County Adam H. Board. blessings. We thank you for all that you do in our lives and in this great city. We're before you once again to do the work of the citizens of Lancaster. We ask that you would lead, guide, and direct us as we do so. May we set personal agendas aside and do what is in the best interest of all the residents of the city of Lancaster. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I hereby call this meeting of Lancaster City Council to order. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please call the roll. Mrs. Bobbitt? Here. Mrs. Downauer? Here. Mr. Groff? Here. Mr. Hall? Here. Mr. McDaniel? Here. Mr. Schoonover? Here. Mr. Stoughton? Mrs. Teener? Here. Mr. Woodyard? Here. Let the record reflect that eight of nine members of City Council are in attendance <coughs> this evening. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to excuse Mr. Stoughton from tonight's meeting. Second. second. We have a motion and a second to excuse Mr. Stoughton from this evening's meeting. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Mr. Stoughton is excused. I'll just ask that everyone make sure you have your microphones turned on as we work our way through the rest of the agenda. Reading and disposing of the journal. I'd like to present the regular meeting minutes dated June 10th, 2019. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to receive and file the journal. Mr. Groff? Second. Thank you very much. We have a motion and a second to... Now you got me all messed up, Mr. Groff. <laughs> It was a test. Yeah. Oh, have a motion. Yes, we have a motion and a second to receive and file the journal. Any discussion? <laughs> all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Reports of city officials. Email dated June 11, 2019, regarding inventories and capital improvements submitted by Stormwater Manager Denise Cruz. Email dated June 13, 2013, regarding public works agenda submitted by Mr. Schoonover. Email dated June 23, 2019, regarding Finance Committee agenda submitted by Mr. Stoughton. And finally, an email dated June 24, 2019, regarding Tree Commission appointment submitted by President Uhl. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to receive and file the reports of city officials. Second. We have a motion and a second to receive and file reports of city officials. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Are there any communications? There are none to be presented. We have no special presentations this evening. Are there any petitions or memorials? There are none to be presented. During this portion of the meeting, Lancaster City Council sets time aside to allow the voters and taxpayers of the City of Lancaster to address Council on any item or issue that they would like. If you're interested in addressing Lancaster City Council this evening, please come forward to the podium. Sign in with your name and address and state the same for the record. 
Please note that while at a later portion of the meeting, city council members may choose to address your issue, they will not do so during this time, at, uh, during this portion of the meeting. In accordance with the rules of council, we ask that you would keep your comments to five minutes or less. I'll note that we do have a public hearing tonight on temporary resolution 73-19. If you're here to speak to that particular resolution during the public hearing, please reserve your comments for the public hearing. Otherwise, any item or issue can be discussed here during voter and taxpayer time. Is there anyone who would like to address Lancaster City Council this evening? Yes, ma'am. Yes, my name is Marsha Conrad, and I live at 1005 Zimmer Street. I uh, got this letter in the mail from the Bankruptcy Court on First Energy, which I imagine most of you did unless you opted out of the city plan. Uh, it says we don't have to do anything, but also says if we don't do anything in writing, we ha can't object and we might have to accept assignments. I just wondered, is the city handling this, or do we have to do something individually? I know our, I think our contract goes to the beginning of the year. Uh, we'll, we, whatever the city does, will that automatically go into effect for us that have went with Thirst Energy to start with, or what? I just, I know I don't quite understand this. I'm sure there's others that don't understand the legal parts. Uh, we'd like to get, I'd like to get some clarification if possible at some point. And if we do have to do something, something tells us what we're supposed to do individually if we have to. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Allum, are you in a position to address this? If so, we're going to need a motion to go outside the regular rules of business. Is there such a motion? We have a so motion moved. to go outside the, the regular agenda and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. We are outside the regular agenda. Mr. Ull. Yes, uh, thank you, President Ull. Uh, yes, with, with regard to that, um, because um, we're all part of this, the First Energy is our supplier for our aggregation, electric aggregation program, everybody gets that notice. But there isn't anything that uh, we as individual customers have to do. Um, basically, First Energy is going through bankruptcy court um, and, and they're going through a process of reorganization. Um, so it's my understanding they're going to come out the other side that the, some splinter off company that may have a, uh, you know, a, a different name to it than at First Energy Solutions, uh, but still part of First Energy Solutions uh, is how that's working out of the bankruptcy court. So as far as our services and the things that we get from them and the contract that they service for us, um, nothing changes through this process. But I, I thank you for the question. That is a good question. Great. Thank you. Any other questions or discussion on this item before we return to the regular order of business? Move to return to no regular order. We have a motion to return to the regular second. order of business and a second by Mr. Groff. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. We are back in the regular order of business and are still in voter and taxpayer time to address council. Is there anyone else who would like to address Lancaster City Council this evening? Yes, ma'am. If you just want to go ahead and state your name and address and you can sign in after and okay. go ahead and begin. Uh, my name is Kim Householder. I live at 1907 Salt Lake Drive. Um, I'm addressing our animal ordinance and the nuisance ordinance. Um, I'm, some of you probably have already heard from me. My uh, ward council, Don McDaniel, um, Corey, um, the mayor's office. Um, I have a neighbor who has a lot of cats um, and I'm not positive of how many is inside, but there's a variation of 20 outside. Um, so I, I guess I'm trying to keep this to, you know, council's best interest. But my, my problem is that the ordinance does state any other animals. So to take into consideration that we could uphold this on a case by case basis, just based on if you, um, I think someone talked to a law director, it doesn't apply to cats. But um, that when I say to case by case basis would be that someone is in violation of this ordinance uh, based on the sheer number of cats. Um, I think that, uh, I'm trying to get my thoughts straight because <laughs> I thought of a bunch of things. But I, I think as far as the law is concerned and upholding it, as far as charges 
um, on someone would be on stray cats, it'd be hard to pinpoint ownership because they're just coming to his house. But when they're gonna be removed, they are his. So we have to be careful of um, ownership of his cats. So um, I don't know, just maybe a case by case basis. Um, but I do live in the city for reasons of uh, upholding my safety and health and property value. And I do believe that this is something that should be looked at a little bit uh, deeper. We do have a problem with um, stray, stray cats being neutered and spayed and um, the population can grow fast. I learned from this experience that they can um, have two litters within each heat period or whatever that that's called. But um, Corey knows all this stuff. But um, they can multiply pretty quick. He's got two that are currently pregnant. I have gotten some assistance from Corey. I would like to know at some point if he could let me know um, when those next steps were going to take place that he had told us that were going to happen. But um, I guess just more consideration of the nuisance ordinance because um, there's smell, um, our flower beds get um, urine, poop, all those things in them. I know everyone has these complaints, but when you're talking about the sheer number, I think that perhaps something could be enforced through a case-by-case -case basis. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it's, it's not a complaint of one person letting their cat in and out of their house and roam in the neighborhood and it uses the restroom in your flower beds. This is a direct neighbor to uh, the one side of me who has cats all over outside. Um, <coughs> they are his cats. Most of them have come from re-litters of his cats having more litters and um, I don't know. I mean, I guess I just wanted to make sure that I did come and state my concern to you and I appreciate all your help. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here, man. Yeah, if you don't mind to sign in, thank you so much. As she's signing in, is there anyone else who would like to address Lancaster City Council this evening? They're eating my flowers. Thank you all for being here tonight. Moving on through the agenda, are there reports of standing committees? I have one Water, Water, Pollution Control Committee meeting minutes for June 19, 2019, submitted by Mr. Woodyard. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to receive and file the reports of standing committees. Second. We have a motion and a second to receive and file the reports of standing committees. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Are there reports of special committees? There are none to be presented. We do have a public hearing tonight on temporary resolution 73-19. In just a moment, I will turn this over to the clerk to allow her to read the preamble. After that, the sponsor of this legislation will have opportunity to comment. Once her comments have concluded, we will open the floor to proponents and opponents of this legislation. You will have an opportunity to speak for or against it. After the proponents and opponents have had an opportunity, we will then move into rebuttal, where anyone who spoke as a proponent the first time will have an opportunity for rebuttal the second time, and the same will go for the opposition. Please note, in order to speak during rebuttal, you must have spoken during the initial opportunity to speak during this public hearing. After that, we'll have closing comments from the sponsor, and we will close the public hearing. With that, I'll ask the clerk to read the preamble this evening. A resolution adopting the 2020 tax budget of the City of Lancaster for the fiscal year beginning January 1st, 2020 and submitting same to the Fairfield County Auditor. Offered by Mrs. Downauer, second by Mr. McDaniel. Mrs. Downauer. Thank you, President Wool. Um, this uh, resolution uh, is a requirement uh, by the county and we are required to file this budget and if you would like to provide any other additional details, I'll pass it back to you. I think you've nailed it. Okay. <coughs> With that, we'll open the floor to any proponents who would like to speak in favor of this resolution. If there are no proponents, are there any opponents who would like to speak in opposition of this resolution? With that, there's no opportunity for rebuttal as no proponents or opponents came forward. I'll turn it back to the sponsor for any closing comments. 
Nothing further. I have no closing comments, and so we will then adjourn this public hearing. Be nice if they all went that way. Last two have. <laughs> All right, we will now move on to the reading of resolutions, beginning with the third reading of temporary resolution 70-19. A resolution approving and authorizing the mayor to submit to the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development Lancaster Fiscal Year FY 2019 Community Development Block Grant Annual Action Plan and Statement of Objectives and Amendments, offered by Mr. McDaniel, second by Mr. Groff. Mr. McDaniel. Yes, Mr. President, I would like to make a motion that council pass and gross and enter upon the written record resolution 70-19. Second. We have a motion and a second to pass and gross and enter upon the written record temporary resolution 70-19. Mr. McDaniel. Yes, Mr. President. This is our 2019 fiscal year action plan for the community development block grant. Um, you know, we've had some discussion on this in the past, and I think that council's had opportunity to review the, the document and uh, just asking that it be passed this evening. Very good. Thank you, Mr. McDaniel. Is there further discussion on the motion to pass? Mr. Groff. Uh, yes. I just wanted to make a comment here. Uh, based on the list, which goes along with this resolution, and those who are receiving money from the block grant, uh, there was an issue with this over the last three years. Uh, last year, I was given assurances uh, by the service safety director uh, on the same issue. Uh, this year it was discussed before this uh, resolution ever came to council, but it has to do with one of those uh, receiving money. I'm not going to mention the name because it's really irrelevant which business it is. Uh, it's on the basis of our codes, and city codes should be met by anyone receiving money. Uh, here's a business that is receiving money for at least the third time who has never been in compliance with our codes. And I mentioned it last year. I was assured it wouldn't happen again. This year, I mentioned it before it came uh, to council, uh, both to the mayor and the service safety director. Uh, there was discussion on it. But based on the fact that nothing has changed and that is still included, it's just an ongoing thing. And I am opposed to anyone getting money who is not in compliance with our city codes. So therefore, I will not be supporting this resolution. Thank you, Mr. Groff. Further discussion on the motion. Further discussion on the motion to pass. Ms. Bobbitt. Thank you very much. Um, I would just like to say that I checked with the mayor and the city service director, and uh, both of them informed me that everyone on this list was in, cl in compliance with any building codes. Is that correct? That is correct. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bobbitt. Further discussion on the motion to pass. Ms. Teener. I will be uh, abstaining. Uh, I am on one of the boards that has asked for money, and my daughter actually works for one of the businesses, and I encourage anyone that has a family member that works for any of the businesses listed that they also abstain. Thank you, Ms. Teener. Further discussion on the motion to pass? Mr. Hall. I, I plan to support the motion, but I do think that Mr. Groff's uh, point about making sure that um, those recipients of CV, D, CDBG funds are compliant uh, with uh, city ordinances or regulations is an important piece. And if we don't have that formally addressed uh, from the standpoint of regulations or how that's how the CDBG block grant is um, formulated, then uh, we might want to consider that at some point. I appreciate that. Thank you, Mr. Hall. My understanding is everyone is currently meeting expectation, but uh, I think your point is well taken. We do need to ensure that that is the case. Further discussion on the motion to pass. Anyone else? Last call. Please call the roll. Mrs. Bobbitt? Yes. Mrs. Downauer? Yes. Mr. Groff? No. Mr. Hall? Yes. Mr. McDaniel? Yes. Mr. Schoonover? Abstain. Mrs. Teener? Sustain. Oh, I'm sorry. I was watching a Law and Order marathon. Um, <laughs> abstain. <laughs> Not sustain. <laughs> Mr. Woodyard? Uh, yes. Temporary resolution 70-19 carries five to one with two abstentions. Temporary resolution 72-19. A resolution to appropriate from the income or balance in the LDOT Fund 208, and increase receipts and appropriations in the LDOT Improvement Fund 314, then amend the certificate with the county auditor. Offered by Mr. Schoonover, second by Mrs. Teener. Mr. Schoonover. 
Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion that council pass and gross and enter upon the written record temporary resolution 7219. Second. We have, <coughs> excuse me. We have a motion and a second to pass and gross and enter upon the written record temporary resolution 72-19. Discussion, Mr. Schoonover. Uh, yeah, this piece is to appropriate uh, $45,000 for bridge repair on South Columbus Street. That was a hit and run of the bridge, if you will, that needs repaired, and then another $100,000 allocation to street repairs for this year, separate from the levy funds. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Schoonover. Further discussion on the motion to pass? Please call the roll. Mrs. Bobbitt? Yes. Mrs. Downauer? Yes. Mr. Groff? Yes. Mr. Hall? Yes. Mr. McDaniel? Yes. Mr. Schoonover? Yes. Mrs. Teener? Yes. Mr. Woodyard? Yes. Temporary Resolution 72-19 passes 8-0. to zero. Temporary Resolution 73-19. A resolution adopting the 2020 tax budget of the City of Lancaster for the fiscal year beginning January 1, 2020 and submitting same to the Fairfield County Auditor. Offered by Mrs. Downauer, second by Mr. McDaniel. Mrs. Downauer. Mr. President, I would like to make a motion that council pass and gross and enter upon the written record resolution temporarily numbered 73-19. Second. We have a motion in the second to pass and gross and enter upon the written record temporary resolution 73-19. Discussion, Ms. Downauer. Nothing further. Any discussion on the motion to pass? Just as by way of an update, I have had opportunity to engage with one member of the tax commission uh, up on the hill, and uh, it was a fruitful conversation, and uh, since it's sort of come and gone this year, uh, we're obviously going to let this fly and uh, pass this tonight. Um, in the future, I think we'll have opportunity to continue to have discussion as we uh, work with the tax commission going forward. So we'll continue to keep you updated, and likely we'll need uh, continued assistance from members of the administration as we, as we go up the hill to have those conversations. With that, I'll ask that you call the roll. Mrs. Bobbitt? Yes. Mrs. Downauer? Yes. Mr. Groff? Yes. Mr. Hall? Yes. Mr. McDaniel? Yes. Mr. Schoonover? Yes. Mrs. Teener? Yes. Mr. Woodyard? Yes. Temporary Resolution 73-19 passes 8-0. to zero. We now have second reading on a series of resolutions beginning with Temporary Resolution 75-19. A resolution authorizing the Law Director's Office to apply for the Victims of Crime Act grant. Um, offered by Mrs. Downauer, second by Mr. McDaniel. Mrs. Downauer. Yes, Mr. President, I would like to make a motion that Council suspend its rules and waive the third reading of the resolution temporarily numbered 75-19. Second. We have a motion and a second to suspend the rules and waive the third reading of temporary resolution 75-19. Discussion, Ms. Downauer. Uh, just that this, uh, in order to s get the application in on time, we that is why we're asking for suspension. Thank you. Further discussion on the motion to pass. Sorry, suspend. Motion to suspend. Please call the roll. Mrs. Bobbitt? Yes. Mrs. Downauer? Yes. Mr. Groff? Yes. Mr. Hall? Yes. Mr. McDaniel? Yes. Mr. Schoonover? Yes. Mrs. Teener? Yes. Mr. Wichard? Yes. Motion to suspend carries 8 to 0. Ms. Downauer? Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion that Council pass and gross and enter upon the written record resolution temporarily numbered 75-19. Second. We have a motion and a second to pass and gross and enter upon the written record temporary resolution 75-19. Further discussion, Ms. Downauer? Nothing further. Any discussion on the motion to pass? Please call the roll. Mrs. Bobbitt? Yes. Mrs. Downauer? Yes. Mr. Groff? Yes. Mr. Hall? Yes. Mr. McDaniel? Yes. Mr. Schoonover? Yes. Mrs. Teener? Yes. Mr. Woodyard? Yes. Temporary resolution 75-19 passes 8-0. to zero. Temporary resolution 76-19. A resolution authorizing the service safety director to advertise for bids for the Memorial Drive culvert repair project. Offered by Mr. Woodyard, second by Mr. Hall. Mr. Woodyard. Second reading, please. Second, second reading on temporary resolution 76-19. Temporary resolution 77-19. A resolution to increase receipts appropriate from the unencumbered balance in the stormwater reserve fund 619. Amend the certificate of other sources and appropriations with the county auditor. Offered by, let's see, Mr. Woodyard, second by Mr. McDaniel. Mr. Woodyard. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion that Council uh, suspend its rules and waive the uh, third reading of temporary resolution 77-19. 
Second. We have a motion and a second to suspend the rules and waive the third reading of temporary resolution 77-19. Discussion on the motion to suspend Mr. Woodard. I think, uh, Mr. Nixon, can you make any comments on this one? Mr. Nixon. You're watching the water rise. Are, yeah, are you watching Law and Order, too? <laughs> So, so I'm sorry, which one is this? Here? This is the 77-19 uh, uh, resolution to uh, increase the receipts and appropriate from the unencumbered balance of the stormwater utility fund. Well, unfortunately, those are Denise's items. and, and I, You haven't got that information? I haven't got the details for those, no, sir. <coughs> well, basically, uh, the, the money is there, and we need to allocate it for the uh, Curbs, Glasgow Park, and Deeds Wetland and retirement reserve. Okay, thank you, Mr. Woodard. Further discussion on the motion to suspend? Please call the roll. Mrs. Bobbitt? Yes. Mrs. Downauer? Yes. Mr. Groff? Yes. Mr. Hall? Yes. Mr. McDaniel? Yes. Mr. Schoonover? Yes. Mrs. Teener? Yes. Mr. Woodard? Yes. Motion to suspend carries eight to zero. Mr. Woodard? Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion <laughs> that council pass engrossed and enter upon the written record temporary resolution 77-19. Oh, second. Now we got a second. <laughs> um, I think I need a vacation or something. I'm all, I'm all kerflips today. You got one coming. Yeah, I already took it, so I'm in trouble. All right, we have a motion in the second to pass and gross and enter upon the written record. Temporary resolution 77-19. Discussion, Mr. Woodger. Uh, no further discussion, sir. Mrs. Tiener. Yes, I believe this was from the Glasgow lawsuit. Right, Mr. Woodger? Right. Well, the beauty of YouTube was I was able to watch last meeting. And I did have concerns because uh, Ms. Cruz and I had talked about this because of the streets. Mod had been done through that uh, Glasgow project. Well, as I was listening and I watched the video, I had re read at the end of her statement and I had been, she had told me that uh, the street would be fixed, uh, Busby and Fifth, with the money from the suit. Well, at the end of the statement I caught, it said, per her, if it hadn't been picked for paving, it probably would have been looked at differently, but it had already been picked for paving. <coughs> so um, I really do think that monies, sh those monies uh, out of that should be used for paving because in a few years, we're gonna want a levy passed again for the streets. And if money isn't used wisely, um, I have a feeling it will be tough passing it, but I really do believe that this project should pave those two streets. But I'm glad they're getting paved, but I do believe that that project should be, the lawsuit monies should be used because 25,000 was going also into retirement, so. Thank you, Ms. T. I appreciate that. I saw the auditor gesticulating wildly down there. Yes. <laughs> Just for clarification, Ohio Revised Code would prohibit that from happening because enterprise monies, even though they come back, you would have to be able to prove without a shadow of a doubt, like Councilman Woodard said last meeting, in order for state audit to allow that to happen because they will come in after and if they deem that they have been used erroneously, we would then be in um, uh, finding for recovery. To okay, so. Lights <laughs> out. <laughs> is that a last call or what is that? Ooh, that's two. One more. We're heading home. So I, I did want to ask though, so with that lawsuit from Glasgow Park, so putting the twenty five thousand dollars into the retirement fund from the lawsuit. Still, but it's still retirement it's still a stormwater project, Expense. a stormwater fee, a stormwater thing. Fixing a street is not a stormwater okay. project for stormwater funds. That's that's an ORC restriction. Yes, because all the discussions we had, she would ne she had never said any of, of that. Okay. Yes, Mr. Woodrow. And, and further, you know, we have to be just as vigilant that we our stormwater money that comes in uh, from the citizens of Lancaster needs to be taken care of carefully too. And it, she did show us information that the road was no in no worse condition when they were done than it was prior, if not a little better shape. And the comment about had we looked at it differently if it had not been up for uh, repavement is because then we'd have to look at do we need to do significant additional repairs in order to make sure that it's where it needs to be. And so I think everything was covered. But again, we have to be just as diligent with both the street money and the stormwater money. And so 
I rest my case. Thank you, Mr. Woodard. Y'all are watching too much Law and Order. <laughs> had a marathon this weekend. Marathon this weekend, great. Further discussion, Mr. Groff. Yeah, I support uh, Ms. Tiener in the fact that, uh, you know, because of the construction at Glasgow, uh, there are or may certainly have been issues with the street. But based on the uh, discussion with the ORC, uh, I don't see a lot of choice in that. Support. Thank you, Mr. Groff. Further discussion on the motion to pass. All right, please call the roll. Mrs. Bobbitt? Yes. Mrs. Downauer? Yes. Mr. Groff? Yes. Mr. Hall? Yes. Mr. McDaniel? Yes. Mr. Schoonover? Yes. Mrs. Teener? Yes. Mr. Woodchard? Yes. Temporary resolution 77-19 passes 8 to 0. We now have first reading on a series of resolutions, beginning with temporary resolution 78-19. A resolution to appropriate from the unencumbered balance in the general fund 101, increase receipts appropriate from the unencumbered balance in the point. 0.45 Police and Fire Levy Fund 247 and amend the certificate with the County Auditor. Offered by Mr. Hall, second by Mr. Woodyard. Mr. Hall. Yes, Mr. President, I would like to make a motion to suspend the rules <coughs> and await the second and third readings of temporary resolution 78-19. Second. We have a motion and a second to suspend the rules and waive the second and third reading of temporary resolution 78-19. Discussion, Mr. Hall. Yes, if Chief Ford is available, I'd like to ask him to step yep, forward no. and explain the necessity for this particular motion. It looks like the chair may have uh -huh. stepped out. Not. Okay. I think it's all on you, Mr. Well, Hall. Uh, I'll do the best that I can. All right. uh, it is my understanding that we have um, a uh, situation with uh, the fire department where we have received grant funds um, that were, and we used uh, general funds to sort of front load those um, those grants. We have we are in receipt of the revenues, and we have an urgent need to replenish the funds so that uh, we can pay our uh, personnel and some over. Um, time funds uh, that, um, that, that again are fairly urgent. Um, and this actually, that explanation actually applies to all three of the resolutions that you entertained tonight for me. Very good. Further discussion on the motion to suspend? With, with the lights flickering, the chief may have gone to the uh, tornado shelter. <laughs> <laughs> Any other discussion on the motion to suspend tonight? Please call the roll. Mrs. Bobbitt? Yes. Mrs. Downauer? Yes. Mr. Groff? Yes. Mr. Hall? Yes. Mr. McDaniel? Yes. Mr. Schoonover? Yes. Mrs. Teener? Yes. Mr. Wichard? Yes. Motion to suspend carries 8 to 0. Mr. Hall? Yes. Mr. President, I would like to make a motion to pass in gross and enter upon the written record temporary resolution 78 19. Second. We have a motion and a second to pass in gross and enter upon the written record temporary resolution 78 19. Further discussion, Mr. Hall? Um, none at this point. Other discussion for members of council? Please call the roll. Mrs. Bobbitt? Yes. Mrs. Downauer? Yes. Mr. Groff? Yes. Mr. Hall? Yes. Mr. McDaniel? Yes. Mr. Schoonover? Yes. Mrs. Teener? Yes. Mr. Wichard? Yes. Temporary resolution 78-19 passes 8 to 0. Temporary resolution 79-19. A resolution to appropriate from the unencumbered balance in the general fund 101, increase receipts, appropriate from the unencumbered balance in the .45 police and fire levy fund 247, and amend the certificate with the county auditor. Offered by Mr. Hall, second by Mr. Woodyard. Mr. Hall. Yes, Mr. President, I would like to make a motion to suspend the rules and waive the second and third readings of temporary res resolution 70-19. <coughs> Second. We have a motion in the second to suspend the rules and waive the second and third reading of temporary resolution 79-19. Mr. Hall? Yes, same rationale for the previous motion. Very good. Yes, money in. <coughs> Further discussion on the motion to suspend? Please call the roll. Mrs. Bobbitt? Yes. Mrs. Downauer? Yes. Mr. Groff? Yes. Mr. Hall? Yes. Mr. McDaniel? Yes. Mr. Schoonover? Yes. Mrs. Teener? Yes. Mr. Woodyard? Yes. Motion to suspend carries 8 to 0. Mr. Hall. Yes, Mr. President, I would like to make a motion to pass in gross and enter upon the written record temporary resolution 79-19. Second. We have a motion and a second to pass in gross and enter upon the written record temporary resolution 79-19. Further discussion, Mr. Hall? None at this time. Other discussion from members of council? Please call the roll. Mrs. Bobbitt? Yes. Mrs. Downauer? Yes. Mr. Groff? Yes. Mr. Hall? Yes. Mr. McDaniel? Yes. Mr. Schoonover? Yes. Mrs. Teener? Yes. Mr. Woodyard? Yes. Temporary resolution 79-19 passes 8 to 0. Temporary resolution 80-19. 
a resolution to appropriate from the unencumbered balance in the general fund 101 increase receipts appropriate from the unencumbered balance in the 0.45 police and fire levy fund 247 and amend the certificate with the county auditor offered by mr hall second by mr woodard mr hall yes mr president i would like to make a motion to suspend rules and waive the second and third readings of temporary resolution 80-19 mr woodard second Thank you very much. We have a motion and a second to suspend the rules and waive the second and third reading of temporary resolution 80-19. Discussion, Mr. Hall. Again, uh, this is a money and situation, uh, similar rationale for the previous two motions. Thank you very much. Further discussion on the motion to suspend? Please call the roll. Mrs. Bobbitt? Yes. Mrs. Downauer? Yes. Mr. Groff? Yes. Mr. Hall? Yes. Mr. McDaniel? Yes. Mr. Schoonover? Yes. Mrs. Teener? Yes. Mr. Witcher? Yes. Motion to suspend carries 8-0. to zero. Mr. Hall? Yes. Uh, Mr. President, I would like to make a motion to pass in gross and enter upon the written record temporary resolution 80-19. Second. We have a motion and a second to pass in gross and enter upon the written record temporary resolution 80-19. Further discussion, Mr. Hall? None at this time. Other discussion around the table? Please call the roll. Mrs. Bobbitt? Yes. Mrs. Downauer? Yes. Mr. Groff? Yes. Mr. Hall? Yes. Mr. McDaniel? Yes. Mr. Schoonover? Yes. Mrs. Teener? Yes. Mr. Woodard? Yes. Temporary Resolution 80-19 passes 8-0. to zero. Temporary Resolution 81-19. A resolution authorizing the mayor to prepare and submit an application to participate in the Ohio Environmental Protection Agency Water Pollution Control Loan Fund program and to execute contracts as required. Offered by Mr. Woodard, second by Mr. McDaniel. Mr. Woodard. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion of council suspend its rules and waive the second and third readings of Temporary Resolution 81-19. Second. We have a motion and a second to suspend the rules and we have the second and third reading of temporary resolution 81-19. Discussion, Mr. Woodard. Uh, Mr. President, I would like to point out, as I did in the Finance Committee, that one of the reasons that we are suspending on so many issues and also going for one or two, reading, or two readings instead of three is for the lack of a July meeting, although we will be having a special one. And in the future, we hope that council will consider doing two meetings in July because it does put a strain on our departments. Mr. Nixon, could you explain this one, please? Mr. Chairman, members of council, this legislation authorizes the mayor to submit the loan application and accept the loan for the fifth, sixth Forest Road sewer separation project. This is one of our mandated sewer separation uh, overflow projects on our compliance schedule uh, that's required by the Ohio Environmental Protection Agency. Um, we are eligible to receive a 0% loan for the project, and the project is estimated to be $3 million. Um, again, the application is due to Ohio EPA at the beginning of July, so if possible, we would like to, to have the suspension tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Nixon, you know the exact date that it's due? Uh, just at the beginning of July, Denise's notes to me on this. Okay. Further, yes, Ms. Bobby. Just have one question. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Nixon, is that fifth and sixth and fourth rows, well, I know fourth rows, is on the other side of Memorial Drive, or is it on the east side or west side? It's on the east side. The east side, that's what I thought. Yes. For all of it then? Yes. Okay, thank you. Further discussion on the motion to suspend? Please call the roll. Mrs. Bobbitt? Yes. Mrs. Downauer? Yes. Mr. Groff? Yes. Mr. Hall? Yes. Mr. McDaniel? Yes. Mr. Schoonover? Yes. Mrs. Teener? Yes. Mr. Woodard? Yes. Motion to suspend carries 8-0. to zero. Mr. Woodard? Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion that council pass and gross and enter upon the written record temporary resolution 81-19. Second. Thank you very much. Have, that's okay. I was looking for something. No problem. We have a motion and a second to pass and gross and enter upon the written record temporary resolution 81-19. Further discussion, Mr. Woodger. There's so many of these motions coming from this side of the room, that side just falls asleep. <laughs> <laughs> no further comments. Other discussion around the table? Please call the roll. Mrs. Bobbitt? Yes. Mrs. Downauer? Yes. Mr. Groff? Yes. Mr. Hall? Yes. Mr. McDaniel? Second. Yes, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> He's I'm really engaged in something over there. <laughs> I'm looking for an ordinance, I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> Mr. Schoonover? I, I just found it. Good. Yes. <laughs> Mrs. Teener? Yes. Mr. Woodyard? Yes. Motion to pass carries 8 to 0. With a second. With another second, yes. Temporary resolution 82-19. <laughs> 
A resolution authorizing the service safety director to advertise for bids for the 5th, 6th Forest Rose sewer separation project offered by Mr. Woodard, seconded by Mr. Hall. Mr. Woodard. Uh, first of three readings. First reading on temporary resolution 82-19. Temporary resolution 83-19. A resolution authorizing the service safety director to enter into an engineering agreement for the Lawrence Street Water Pollution Control Facility Upgrade Project Design, offered by Mr. Woodard, second by Mr. McDaniel. Mr. Woodard. Uh, first <coughs> reading of two. First two readings on temporary resolution 83-19. Temporary resolution 84-19. A resolution to appropriate from the unencumbered balance and amend the certificate with the county auditor in the Parks and Recreation Fund 212. Offered by Mrs. Bobbitt, second by Mrs. Teener. Mrs. Bobbitt. Thank you, President Hall. Mr. Tharp, uh, could you please come to the podium and for our viewing public, talk about this piece of legislation briefly. Whilst he's coming, can we get the motion to suspend, please? We sure can. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion the council suspend its rules and waive the second and third reading on temporary resolution number 8419. Second. We have a motion and a second to suspend the rules and waive the second and third reading on temporary resolution 84-19. Mr. Tharp. Uh, as I mentioned before, this was uh, in the revenue uh, projections for 2019. We knew this was coming. Uh, as you know, the budget was done a little different in 2019 than it had been in previous years, a little tighter, a little more real numbers. Uh, we projected actually in the parks to be calling for about 86,400 sometime in the year. So this is only $80,000. So it's a benefit right now. It's, it's a it's a break, but still, um, it's something we knew was coming. Um, we couldn't have predicted when. We just knew sometime mid-year we would need to come back and pull more money into the parks fund. So as I said before, the parks are in a better state than they have been in the last four years as far as unencumbered, unexpended monies. So um, these 13 line items are, are just something we need to keep operating to get us through the end of the year. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Thurman. Ms. Bobbitt? Nothing further. Further discussion or questions? Just a question, uh, are there some bills to be paid or why do we need to suspend tonight? Uh, what I've been doing over the last probably month to month and a half, and Trish will attest to this, is we've been moving monies out of the um, one of the parks funds to just to keep other line items going until we've seen what exactly mid-year we were going to need all of the line items. I didn't want to come back to council twice, so I just wanted to do this one time. So um, we're in a point where we just need to put money into these lines so I can keep doing fund to fund transfers. Okay. Further discussion on the motion to suspend? Please call roll. Mrs. Bobbitt? Yes. Mrs. Downauer? Yes. Mr. Groff? Yes. Mr. Hall? Yes. Mr. McDaniel? Yes. Mr. Schoonover? Yes. Mrs. Teener? Yes. Mr. Richard? Yes. Motion to suspend carries eight to zero. Ms. Bobbitt? Thank you, Mr. Roll. Uh, Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion that Council pass in gross and enter upon the written record temporary resolution number 8419. Second. We have a mo motion and a second to pass in gross and enter upon the written record temporary resolution 84-19. Further discussion, Ms. Bobbitt? No, thank you. Other discussion or questions? Mr. Woodrow? I'd just like to make a comment. I would rather see a legislation like this come to us a little quicker so we could have at least two readings on it. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Woodrow. Further discussion on the motion to pass? Bobby. The, the only comment I would have to that is um, he thought that we was going to not have an, you know, enough meetings. So right. I actually told him to suspend on it, that we would suspend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Further discussion? Another reason for two July meetings. <laughs> Well, on one hand, that's true, but for as long as I've been on here, Mr. Woodard, and it'll date back to when you were on here perhaps before as well, we've had one meeting, and many department heads are proactive, and they know that we have that one meeting in July and one meeting in December, and so I think some of this does get backlogged and, you know, thoughts going on and things can get missed, but, um, it, you know... Uh, it, there's so much that goes on with the 4th of July and the festival. That's one of the main reasons that there's that singular meeting. Certainly something that can be discussed uh, as we go forward, however. Yeah. Well, one meeting in, in December really is all it's needed. But as I say, in July, when you're looking at we ran out of a lot of legislation through the summer and in parks, in streets, in uh, the water pollution and everything. There are issues that come up, and we just, it puts a real stress on our department heads. So. 
Thank you. I think that uh, it's possible the administration would suggest the such about getting the budget ready to go and passed in one meeting in December. Uh, and so I think there's an argument to be made both ways. But again, your point is, is taken and we can continue to discuss, particularly as we prepare in what, September, October for the, for the uh, council meetings coming forward. Okay, further discussion on the motion to pass. Please call the roll. Mrs. Bobbitt? Yes. Mrs. Downauer? Yes. Mr. Groff? Yes. Mr. Hall? Yes. Mr. McDaniel? Yes. Mr. Schoonover? Yes. Mrs. Teener? Yes. Mr. Woodyard? Yes. Motion to pass carries 8 to 0. Temporary resolution 85 19. A resolution for Lancaster City Council to accept and approve the June 14, 2019 revision to the LPT zero tolerance drug and alcohol testing policy adopted on January 31st, 2000. 11 and to authorize updates to be made as needed by the administrator offered by Mr. Schoonover second by Mrs. Bobbitt. Mr. Schoonover. Mr. President I'd like to make a motion that council suspend its rules and waive the second and third readings of temporary resolution 8519. Second. We have a motion and a second to suspend the rules and waive the second and third reading of temporary resolution 85-19. Mr. Schoonover. Um, Preamble's pretty self-explanatory, but there's some updates that the state required to public transit's um, drug and alcohol testing policy, and they need that back ASAP, so that's why we're asking for suspension. Very good. Further discussion on the motion to suspend. Bless you. <laughs> Please call the roll. Mrs. Bobbitt? Yes. Mrs. Downauer? Yes. Mr. Groff? Yes. Mr. Hall? Yes. Mr. McDaniel? Yes. Mr. Schoonover? Yes. Mrs. Teener? Yes. Mr. Woodyard? Yes. Motion to suspend carries 8 to 0. Mr. Schoonover? Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion that council pass, engross, and enter upon the written record temporary resolution 8519. Second. We have a motion and a second to pass, engross, and enter upon the written record temporary resolution 85-19. Further discussion, Mr. Schoonover? No, sir. Other discussion around the table? Please call the roll. Mrs. Bobbitt? Yes. Mrs. Downauer? Yes. Mr. Groff? Yes. Mr. Hall? Yes. Mr. McDaniel? Yes. Mr. Schoonover? Yes. Mrs. Teener? Yes. Mr. Richard? Yes. Temporary resolution 85-19 passes 8 to 0. Temporary resolution 86-19. A resolution to appropriate from the unencumbered balance in the general fund 101 and amend the certificate with the county auditor. Offered by Mrs. Downauer, second by Mr. McDaniel. Ms. Downauer. First of two readings, please. First of two readings on temporary resolution 86-19. Temporary resolution 87-19. A resolution declaring the necessity of an election on the question of approving the passage of an ordinance to amend section 183.012, 183.013, and 183.02 of the codified ordinances of the City of Lancaster, Ohio in, ordinance in order to increase the city income tax rate by 45 hundredths of 1% from the current rate of 1 and 75 hundredths percent to a rate of 2 and 20 hundredths percent beginning January 1st, 2020 to specify the allocation of funds from such tax and declaring an emergency. Offered by Mrs. Downer, second by Mr. McDaniel. Ms. Downer. First of three readings, please. So the first of three readings, and I'll just briefly mention as the mayor's not here, he will be here in our uh, upcoming meetings to discuss more broadly and I imagine we'll have a robust discussion among members of City Council as well but just for the public to understand this is not for City Council to approve increasing the income tax this allows the city to place the issue before the voters so that they can decide so there was a question even earlier about whether or not we were going to do this and, and, and all we're doing is saying yes or no this can go on the ballot so that's what this resolution does we'll have a more robust discussion in meetings to come. First reading on temporary resolution 87-19. Temporary resolution 88-19. A, resolu a resolution declaring the necessity of an election on the questions of approving the passage of an ordinance to amend section 183.012, 183.013, and 183.02 of the codified for codified ordinances of the City of Lancaster, Ohio, in order to increase and replace the city income tax rate for parks and recreation from the current rate of one and one half tenth of 1% tax for the period January 1st, 2018 through December 31st, 2022 on earnings and income to a rate of 20 hundredths percent continuing beginning beginning January 1st, 2020 and declaring an emergency. Offered by Mrs. Downauer, second by Mr. McDaniel. Mrs. Downauer. 
First of three readings, please. First of three readings, and once again, I'll just state this allows the issue to be put before the electorate. The voters of Lancaster will decide this. Uh, I'll also <coughs> just note um, the Law Director Allum's comments from earlier that this is still being researched as to how we may go about this, and we may expect amendments on temporary resolution 88-19 as we continue forward. With that first reading on temporary resolution 88-19, are there other resolutions to come before Lancaster City Council this evening? If not, we'll move on to the reading of ordinances, beginning with the second reading of Temporary Ordinance 9-19. An ordinance to repeal and replace Lancaster Codified Ordinance Part 1, Administrative Code, Title 9, Taxation, Chapter 187, Motor Vehicles License Tax of the Codified Ordinances of the City of Lancaster, offered by Mr. Schoonover, second by Mrs. Bobbitt. Mr. Schoonover. <coughs> Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to council suspend its rules and waive the third reading of temporary ordinance 919. Second. We have a motion and a second to suspend the rules and waive the third reading of temporary ordinance 9-19. Mr. Schoonover. Um, we're asking for suspension on this piece. It, it's a timing issue to get to the state so it can be enacted for the beginning of next year. Um, for anyone that doesn't know what this is, um, it's an additional $5 increase on your license fee through the DMV. That's all I got. That goes directly to the city of Lancaster for the yes. purposes of streets and bridges. Yes. Right? Very you good. Got it. Further discussion on the motion to suspend. Mm -hmm. Please call the roll. Mrs. Bobbitt? Yes. Mrs. Downauer? Yes. Mr. Groff? Yes. Mr. Hall? Yes. Mr. McDaniel? Yes. Mr. Schoonover? Yes. Mrs. Teener? Yes. Mr. Woodard? Yes. Motion to suspend carries 8 to 0. Mr. Schoonover? Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion that Council pass and gross an interim upon the written record to temporary <coughs> ordinance 919. Second. We have a motion and a second to pass and gross an interim upon the written record temporary ordinance 9-19. <coughs> Further discussion, Mr. Schoonover? No, thank you. Other discussion around the table tonight? Please call the roll. Mrs. Bobbitt? Yes. Mrs. Downauer? Yes. Mr. Groff? Yes. Mr. Hall? Yes. Mr. McDaniel? Yes. Mr. Schoonover? Yes. Mrs. Teener? Yes. Mr. Woodyard? Yes. Temporary Ordinance 9-19 passes 8-0. to zero. Temporary Ordinance 10-19. An ordinance to authorize the Service Safety Director to accept approximately 21 acres, more or less, of property situated in Section 33, Township 15, Range 19, Township of Greenfield, Griffith County, Ohio, from the estate of D. Merrill Bowers, offered by Mrs. Bobbitt, second by Mrs. Tiener. Mrs. Bobbitt. Second reading, please. Second reading on temporary ordinance 10-19. We now have first reading on two ordinances, beginning with temporary ordinance 11-19. An ordinance to amend section 183.012, 183.013, and 183.02 of the codified ordinances of the City of Lancaster, Ohio, in order to increase the city income tax rate by 45 hundredths of 1% from the current rate of one and seventy-five hundredth percent to a rate of two and twenty hundredth percent beginning January twenty or January first, twenty twenty, and to specify the allocation of funds from such tax offered by Mrs. Downer, second by Mr. McDaniel. Mrs. Downer. First of three readings, please. First of three readings on temporary ordinance eleven nineteen. Temporary ordinance twelve nineteen. An ordinance to amend section 183.012, 183.013, and 183.02 of the codified ordinances of the City of Lancaster, Ohio, in order to repeal the current rate of one and one half tenth of one percent tax for the period January 1st, 2018 through December 31st, 2022, on earnings and income, and replace with a rate of 20 hundredth. 20 hundredths percent, continuing beginning, beginning January 1st, 2020, on earnings and income income for parks and recreation as more fully set forth herein in declaring an emergency. Offered by Mrs. Downauer, second by Mr. McDaniel. Mr. Mrs. Downauer. First of three readings, please. First of three readings on temporary ordinance 12-19. Is there further ordinance to come before Lancaster City Council this evening? Seeing none, we'll move to table legislation of which we have none. Does anyone have any unfinished business this evening? Does anyone have any new business this evening? Mr. President. Mr. McDaniel. Yes. Uh, I was tasked with, uh, as the Economic Development Committee Chairman, with uh, soliciting and receiving uh, nominations for our CRA Housing Council. 
And uh, I did receive several nominations or several names that uh, council members wish to nominate for our two positions. We are, we are tasked with uh, uh, appointing two people to this council. And uh, of course the administration is tasked with appointing people. But our two, um, uh, did everyone receive the email I sent out regarding our nominations? So there were some attachments there. I hope you had a chance to read them. But uh, with that said, I would like to nominate uh, two people for the ha Housing Council, and I would like to no nominate uh, President Ohl uh, as one of the council appointments and Donna Fox Moore as one of the council appointments. Second. We have a motion and a second to appoint two members to the CRA, myself and Ms. you said Donna Fox Moore. Donna Fox Moore, yes. Ms. Fox Moore. Discussion on the motion. Mr. Woodrow. I object to the special one of these. I feel that uh, uh, President Uhl is part of city council, even though he considers himself an assistant mayor. Uh, I think that uh, council members are not allowed to be on this committee, and we're just appointing an additional of what that person feels is an additional administration person to it, and we should have two people appointed by council that are not directly involved in council activities. Mr. Rule does have the right to vote, so that makes him a council member at certain times. So uh, I feel that uh, this is not appropriate and that we should be able to find two, two people that can represent council. Sir, may I respond to that? You sure can, thank you. I, I think we had some advice from the law director regarding this that uh, uh, President O was an acceptable nomination and could be appointed by council. My reasoning behind this is we talked last week about transparency, about council being able to be involved in some of the housing council decisions. And uh, my reason for the nomination is just that. It allows us as a council to have a person representing us directly. Certainly we'd expect Ms. Fox Moore to do the same also, but uh, the access and the information and the, and the feedback that we were able to get from having uh, President Ohl appointed on our behalf was my consideration. Thank you, Mr. McDaniel, and I'll just uh, state as well that um, I consider myself president of council, not assistant mayor. I don't think we have one of those. And uh, while ORC provides opportunity to serve <coughs> as uh, mayor, if our current mayor is indisposed, um, that happens infrequently. And uh, so for purposes of this and any other business before the city, I consider myself council president. With that and that opportunity to defend myself, I'm going to defer this discussion and the vote today to Mr. Graf. I'll ask that you run the rest of this vote uh, and the discussion that, that will precede this. Any other discussion? Thank you. Ms. Tanner. I understand that there were five, if I recall. Yes, there were. So you've nominated two. Can anybody nominate anybody else, or that's we're just going by those well, that, two? That was what I was looking I'm sorry, Mr. Roth. That's it. I recognized uh, that's what I was looking for when I seconded that legislation twice. I was looking for the ordinance, and it does appear that council can, at, I, I believe we have to vote on them, but uh, a motion could be made to, to replace either or both nominees, yes. But that would be a separate motion, I believe. Uh, question, Mr. Ellen. Do we have to vote on one before uh, other alternatives can be? Um, you could go about it several ways, but I think my suggestion would be yes. That would probably be the cleanest way to do it. Is that you have a motion? You have a motion of uh, of nominations before you um, to vote on those, and if not successful, then start the process over again with another motion with other nominations. Do I also have a motion that we vote on these individually? That's what I was going to ask. Second I have a motion. Oh. Well, it's, it, you'd have to amend the motion that's currently before you that was of the two. So. Um, amend or withdraw? Amend. You, you could withdraw it as well and start I would be over. willing to amend the, uh, my motion uh, and vote on uh, separately, vote on the candidate separately. Mr. Rowe. Yeah. Yes. Can we go forward? There? We can go forward then with making other nominations and just vote on them one by one. Um, so that way, at least someone will know that there are other nominations. Yeah, I think what I'm going to suggest for uh, <laughs> for
for clarity for folks watching, including maybe just withdraw the motion that was made and make separate motions for the nominations or whatever of individuals. That might be the better way to do it. That might be cleaner. That, based on that recommendation from the law director, I'll uh, withdraw my uh, motion. Can I second that? So what I'd like to accept is a motion. Uh, and we withdraw the amendment. That we could vote on individually. And we withdraw the amendment. And the second to it, don't we? we have to do that too. All right, I'll make a motion. We withdraw both the amendment and the original motion. Second. Second. You can't second. That'll work clean. Just do that with a uh, yay or nay. All in favor, please say yay. Yes. 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 Opposed? Nomination withdrawal. Go forward with uh, individual nominations at this point, and I would suggest that it can be for more than two, just so others will know, you know, that there may be someone else to vote on. Clarification on that. I'm sorry. Clarification. How can it be for more than two when we just when we're we going just to vote individually? That. Only two can be nominated. Well, more can be nominated, only two can be approved. So you may nominate three or four people, but we will vote individually on each one. The ones that are approved out of that will be the two. Is that clear, Mr. McDaniel? Mm -hmm. point of, point of Once order, we have two, we're done voting it. was your recommendation, right? My recommendation would be that you do individual nominations and vote on those up or down as you go through the process would be my recommendation at this point. So don't So just take one at a time. I'd like to make a motion that we appoint uh, President O to represent council on the CRA Housing Council. Second. We have a motion and a second for President O to be nominated for the Housing Council. Can we have a roll call on that? Sure can, but I'd like to. Mr. Roll. Thank you very much, Mr. Groff. Uh, I'll just note I didn't seek this. I didn't ask for it. I was nominated, I think, by Mr. Stoughton yes. uh, as, as that came around, and so it, it matters to me not. Um, appreciate uh, the, the support that uh, is being shown on, on this end, but it doesn't really bother me one way or another. However, I'd be happy to serve if, if elected. Mr. Thank Hall. You. Yeah, I, I just want to say I have tremendous respect uh, for um, Chairman. Um, President Newell's uh, leadership, but I do think that we need to balance two interests. Uh, one is transparency, the, the other is conflict, the, the apparent or potential conflict of interest. And on the basis of that and um, President Newell's uh, comments, um, I would um, be disinclined to support my good friend's uh, candidacy for this position. Anyone else? Can we have a roll call vote? Mrs. Mr. Bobbitt? At, hold on. Oh, I am so sorry. Right. He, he called me first. He called me. <laughs> I apologize. Uh, at this point, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, with, I would ask that my nomination be withdrawn. Since there doesn't seem to be support around council, we can do that easily and move on to other nominations. I would be happy to withdraw that nomination. Make a motion and to withdraw. I, and I second that motion. All in we'll favor. have a yay or nay across the board. Yay. Yay. All those yeah. in favor? Yes. 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 Opposed? Nomination withdrawal. Thank you very much. And thank you, Mr. Groff. Since I'm out of contention, I'll take back the chair at this point. I appreciate you serving in that capacity. Appreciate the support of my colleagues and your comments as well. Um, and again, had no skin off my nose, so I was happy to serve. But if we believe there are two others that uh, are eligible, I think that would be just fine. Mr. Groff, I see you trying to seek the floor. No, I'm just getting my hand up for the next nomination. Yes, go ahead. Uh, I'd like to uh, nominate Brad Hutchison. Okay, we have a motion to nominate second. Brad Hutchison. We have a second. Is there a discussion? I Call guess my vote. question would be, um, no. I'm sorry? Go ahead. Has uh, someone talked to Mr. Hutchinson about his interest, ability, or willingness to serve on this commission? The nomination came from Tom, Mr. President. I'm, I'm assuming that a discussion had taken place, but I can't say for sure. Yeah, me neither. Okay. Ms. Bobbitt, I saw you seeking the floor. The only thing that, um, you know, I have nothing against Mr. Hutchinson, but he's also a contractor, so this would be 
you know, we're talking about transparency, but just wanted to throw that out there. Very good. Yes, Mr. Groff. The uh, CRA is for residential construction. Uh, while he has had an apartment and a building that he did, uh, his primary business is not contractor, and he is not a residential builder. Correct. Call the vote. Mr. Woodard has called for the vote. That is an actual motion that requires a second. Is there a second? Second. If there's no objection, we can move forward with a roll call vote on Mr. Hutchinson. No, yeah, we're, we're not moving past that to actually vote on his nomination. Mrs. Right, please call the roll. Mrs. Bobbitt? Yes. Mrs. Downauer? Yes. Mr. Groff? Yes. Mr. McDaniel? Yes. Mr. Schoonover? Yes. Mrs. Teener? Yes. Mr. Woodard? Yes. Mr. Hutchins has been approved to be one of the members of the CRA from the legislative. Mr. Hall I think was not. <gasps> Mr. Hall, oh my God, I'm sorry, he's not on my. That's what you get. That's what I get for cheating. Here's my cheater. Okay, let's do this one more time. No, I have a cheater here. That's what you get for cheating. Okay, so Mrs. Bobbitt, Mrs. Bobbitt. Let's just do it one more time. Yeah, let's do it again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, Mrs. Bobbitt. Yes. Mrs. Downauer. Yes. Mr. Groff. Yes. Mr. Hall. Yes. Mr. McDaniel. Yes. Mr. Schoonover. Yes. Mrs. Teener. Yes. Mr. Woodard. Yes. That motion carries. Mr. Hutchinson has been appointed. I would. Ask that this council be prepared should Mr. Hutchinson not accept to be ready to appoint someone else as I'm not confident that a conversation had been had I think it was an idea that Mr. Stoughton had and that's fine uh, and if he's willing to do it that's great if not we may have to come back and revisit this but we do have one for now Mr. Hall. No I, I'm just wondering it, is there um, a uh, an urgent need for us to pass or to identify and confirm our two nominations tonight because it does seem that there may be some value in us but because once we, whoever is in the, whoever we propose first and second, if there's an up and down vote, those other candidates may not get the same level of hearing. And I'm wondering if there's a process that we could put in place that would allow us to more fully discuss either through a committee or some other process to make sure that we have a balanced discussion about all of our candidates. I mean, I think that's possible. The mayor's request was that we consider this tonight because the legislation was passed and is Got in it. effect. Um, and so we were trying to get this board in place. I assume that the uh, administration has or will be soon making their appointments, yeah. as well as the Regional Planning Commission to theirs as well. Is that accurate, Mr. Yeah, the Planning Commission has that on their agenda for the next meeting as well. Okay. And the mayor has not discussed who he's appointing, but yes. Okay, thank you. Mr. Woodger. And, and I do think we should go ahead and, and go with uh, at least discuss or consider Mr. McDaniel's uh, other nominee, Mrs. Fox. Very good. Yes, uh, I don't know who was first. I'll go with Ms. Bobbitt. I'd like to make the motion that we accept Donna Fox Moore to the CRA. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second for Ms. Fox Moore to be appointed. Is there discussion? Mr. Graff, I saw you trying to seek the floor. No, I was trying to uh, include in the discussion of Mr. Hall. Okay, well, you can feel free to do that. Uh, I wanted to support his position of not necessarily having to go with this tonight in the fact that I received this list uh, since I have not get, been getting the emails it was forwarded to me. I received it about 30 minutes before I left for council. Did not have enough time to give it any kind of a review. Uh, I did not see any attachments on what I received. Uh, I'm not sure of qualifications on a couple of the people on here and I would like more time to consider it myself. I appreciate that, Mr. Groff. There's some issue with your email that you're not yes, getting. Yes, there that? is. Okay, can we get Once, IT, uh, maybe IT to made their change? I don't get the emails this. anymore on the city email. And Mr. Stoughton agreed that because I'm on Mac, that there is an issue and it's not been resolved at this point. Okay, mm -hmm. maybe we can get IT, Mr. Martin, to help out here a little bit. You're very warm yeah. to do that. Yes. yes. Okay. Yes, Ms. Tina. I do believe maybe we should not do this this evening also because from what I with thought the list I saw I just assumed everybody had been talked to and you said that you didn't know that Mr. Hutchinson had been talked to Th those nominations came from council members and okay uh, and I do know that the uh, Miss Foxmore and uh, Miss Sequoy have both been spoken to by Mrs. Bobbitt and they both agreed to serve 
Okay, and Lindy Jackson was another one, and uh, he would right. be very good too. And I, I don't know that he was spoken to or had sent us anything. I didn't see anything, and that's really not fair <coughs> to us if others have been spoken to. And um, so we may, we, we may need to wait. I appreciate that. We have a motion and a second on the floor at this time. We're going to have to address that motion. A further discussion. And then my only question would be we've already approved one. Right, yes, yeah, so correct. <coughs> we probably should have had the discussion before we approved. The toothpaste is I mean, out of the tube. Yes. When the mayor, when this was brought forward, he told all of us, and, and Orman, you might have not been on then, but he told all of us to send in resumes, mm -hmm. uh, look for folks that we thought would be able to serve, and um, that's what I did as soon as I got it, and I got the two resumes and got those in, and I believe they were emailed to everyone. I believe that's accurate. I looked back yes. through and saw yeah. it to City Council all that was several weeks ago, so there, there's opportunity to have addressed. I don't know. I, got I mean, yours I don't know if we, we'd have to talk to Randall. I mean, you already had a motion that was passed. I don't think we can go back on that motion, the well, previous motion. Uh, tonight we can't. Let's call for the vote that we have and see where we go with that. Yeah. yeah, we have to wait till the next meeting, don't we? I don't either. At this point, I, 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 at this point, I just want to go home, man. I'm just going to go home. Roberts rules of order now. I can tell you where we are. Mr. President, yes. I just say that the email that I sent today uh, or yesterday was a compilation of previous emails, which were sent to all of us. So you should have had these resumes and you should have had this information weeks ago. That's right. All I did was compile for a sense of bringing it all together into last night's email. So it's not like a new email appeared out of nowhere. It was co compiling the previous data and sending it forward. Mr. Groff. Other emails were never forwarded to me, so I've never yeah, received Apparently that's an IT problem. That does yeah, need to be Yeah, I think you got a problem over there, Mr. Groff, because those were sent out. So it sounds like maybe you're not getting the emails from Again, I think uh, when IT made that change, uh, I don't believe I'm the only one that's not getting the emails. Well, and yeah, so remember there's a new process by which we get them where we actually have to either have it set up on your phone or because we have to go into our city email actually now. It's not going to forward to your personal account anymore, and that's never going to happen anymore. And so we got to somehow get into the actual city email account so that you can see those. So we're going to work to help to help facilitate that as we go forward. And it's not just those emails. I haven't gotten many from the city yeah, that, that's yeah, a problem. Need, so we'll get IT to look at it for you. Ms. Bobbitt. Um, just to say, you know, if, if maybe Mr. Hutchinson wouldn't want the position, Could if no one has alternate. talked to him about it, then we can, at our next meeting, then go. Correct. And, um, you know, and probably between this time and our next meeting, we should also talk with Mr. Jackson and uh, let him know that uh, his name was on the list. Yeah, I mean, I, I would have assumed, I guess, that city council members submitted names that they had had a conversation with those folks about their willingness to serve. Uh, I think that's the assumption that we're, that's we're, what we're I, making my tonight. Assumption was. Yeah. Um, give me one second here. Further discussion on this as I look at the opportunity to reconsider <coughs> the motion. Previous. Question. Yes. Would it be possible to accept an alternate in case one yes. Good does idea. not... <laughs> I think that would be the way to go. We know a couple of them at least have been vetted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I call for the for the vote on the motion. Second. Okay. Is there any further discussion, or are we ready to move ahead, Mr. Hall? Yeah. I, I just want to say that I don't feel strongly about uh, holding off on this vote. Um, I, it was more of a process recommendation. I think we have uh, credible candidates um, on the floor, so I'm I'm ready to vote if that's the consensus of the group. Okay, it seems like there is a consensus that we're ready to vote. Is there objection to moving forward? If not, then we will ask that the roll be called on the motion to appoint Ms. Fox Moore to the CRA board as a representative of the city council. Please call the roll. Mrs. Bobbitt? Yes. Mrs. Downauer? Yes. Mr. Groff? No. Mr. Hall? Yes. Mr. McDaniel? Yes. Mr. Schoonover? Yes. Mrs. Teener? No. Mr. Woodyard? Yes. Motion to appoint Ms. Foxmore carries six to two. 
Uh, I'll thank you all for your work, those who nominated folks and uh, working through that process. Is, is there a motion for an alternate? Well, alternate? Alternate? well, there sure can be. I'd like to make a motion that um, we nominate Lindy Jackson as the alternate. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to nominate Lindy Jackson as an alternate if one of the two that have been nominated to the CRA choose not to serve. I see Mr. Groff. Uh, yes, I had a question for uh, Mr. Ullum on that nomination uh, because it is someone that serves on the BZA. If that is acceptable to be on both of those boards. Uh, yes, he is a member of the BZA. I don't know that there's any... I don't know that this creates a conflict or whatever for him if to be in that. If any of the things done on the CRA require uh, a zoning uh, approval from BZA, uh, there would be a conflict. I think that would be remote and it's separate and apart from that. I don't necessarily see that as a conflict. If, if I might, I think that the CRA only would, the you know, only time the CRA gets it's together is if there's an appeal, right? If, if they're denied the tax credit, the yes. CRA board would work through that appeal process. Yes, and they make a yearly review of the app, or they make a review of applications or whatever they're submitted, yes. Right, so they're and really only things. deciding whether or not that tax is, is abated for that, for that particular, or that appeal that, is upheld or not. That's correct, that is correct. Okay. Just like to be clear up front on that. Sure, I think that's a good clarification. Good I had point. a similar thought in my head when his name popped up. Christine. Yeah, I know Mr. Jackson for many years, and I think if there he thought there was a conflict, he'd probably recuse himself from it if, if he thought there was. So Do we know where that's a good choice. Yeah, we know where that nomination came from. That was a Tom Stoughton. Another Mr. Stoughton. Also. <laughs> so again, we're hoping that someone's talked to Mr. Jackson. All right. Further discussion on nominating Mr. Jackson as an alternate uh, alternate. Secretary board should one of the two selected choose not to serve. Please call the roll. Mrs. Bobbitt? Yes. Mrs. Downauer? Yes. Mr. Groff? Yes. Mr. Hall? Yes. Mr. McDaniel? Yes. Mr. Schoonover? Yes. Mrs. Teener? Yes. Mr. Woodyard? Yes. Thank the merciful Lord that that passes 8 to 0 and we can move past this particular issue. <laughs> Thank you. All right, let's not have so much fun with the next one. We have a request from the mayor to confirm his appointment to the Tree Commission. Mr. Everett has been suggested. Mr. Everett is on the Historic Lancaster Commission. Brian Everett is an attorney in town and is affectionately known around the community as the Tree Ninja. Uh, the Tree <coughs> Commission has vetted Mr. Everett. They have requested his uh, service on the board. The mayor has appointed him, and it takes the consent of this council to move that nomination forward. Is there a motion to appoint Mr. Mr. Everett to the Tree Commission. So moved. And second. We have a motion and a second to appoint Brian Everett to the Tree Commission, or rather to confirm the mayor's appointment to uh, the Tree Commission. Discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Look how that went. <laughs> Look how smooth that was. Very good. Thank you all very much for your work. Is there further new business to come before City Council this evening? Yes, Ms. Tanner. Yeah, I'd like to address the, the ladies uh, that had come, had come to council about the cat. This household do I believe, that. right? Yes. yes. Um, <coughs> I agree with you. There is a cat problem in this town. Um, a lot of it has to do with owners that uh, are not taking care of them. They're just not. And uh, unfortunately, there's not enough enforcement. To me, they shouldn't be allowed to feed outside. They need to be licensed. They need to be maintained, controlled like dogs are. And the problem is, is enforcing that. Um, there's one city that they feed outside for so long, and then they have to take the bulls back in. There was somebody in my ward. She had two three by, I'm sorry, <coughs> nine by 13 cake pans that she would fill up. And she had like 17 or 18 cats. And how I had, uh, got to know Mr. Schoonover it was in January uh, 2014 when I got on council he called me and it was about the TNR program there were a lot of cats that were taken care of at that point but a lot of it has to do with uh, owners are not responsible and they let them run uh, and it's just not the feral cats it's people that own cats I've seen them with collars 
Uh, one thing I don't miss about Facebook anymore because I'm not on, if Puff gets hit in the street, it's a whining, crying prayer fest because their cat got hit. We'll leave your cat in the house. <laughs> that's kind of a... <laughs> how do you really feel, Miss Tina? Yeah, that's okay, how I feel. I was just checking. This is coming from somebody who lived in the country. I so. <laughs> but uh, people aren't responsible. and But enforcement is the problem. Uh, I, I don't know who would enforce. Um, police department can't. Um, the uh, dog shelter is a good example. Now you can't, they don't answer their phone now until 11 o'clock just to get a dog and you have to call the police department now. And they won't call unless the animal's vicious. So uh, I know I've been to the Humane Society. They're full, they're always full of cats. So I, I really don't know, but something does need to be done. We do need to go through law committee, code enforcement, I'll finish after everyone else says their piece, that's and fine. I can play both sides we'll if that's allowed. Mr. All Mr. right. Uh, yes, I'd like to, uh, you know, based on what Ms. Tanner had to say, uh, mm -hmm. bottom line when there's an issue, whether it's with dogs or cats, we do not have animal control within the city. Uh, there may be ordinances. Uh, the police can handle barking dog, that type of thing, but we do not have animal control. Uh, much like with the health issues and the health department, uh, we contract each year. Uh, with animals, uh, we do give a, and I think Corey will probably support this later on, a very minimal sum for some assistance from the Humane Society. But animal control is a county function. Uh, with the dog shelter and because we are part of the county and because we do pay taxes to the county my question would be to uh, Mr. Martin as far as any assistance that might be offered from a county level through animal control in situations like this. <coughs> I don't know of any agency that the county is obligated to deal with cats. I will say this the dog warden Mr. Groff is in our city. There are several incidences where they are following up investigation on dogs. <laughs> they do provide us dog things because we are in the county. Uh, there are many police reports filed because of dog bitings and issues like that. So they do follow through their obligation within the city limits. I'm grateful for our county dog warden that does follow up, especially when it's a vicious dog or a biting thing. They treat us here in the city like anywhere else in the county. but. I believe our RRC does address things about a dog warden and about dogs, but I don't think the state has anything about cats. And our, clearly, I think our ordinance is weak about that. And uh, so I, I don't know what we can do. I know from a code enforcement perspective, we don't have any current codes that is being violated from there. Uh, she has mentioned that uh, there is not the odor. Uh, she might question this, but we are checking for odors of waste or things like that, but uh, you know that could change down the road, down the future. Uh, but uh, I, we just don't have any regulations addressing specifically cats in this situation. Thank you, Mr. Martin. Yes, Ms. Dana. Um, this is not just a problem in River Valley Highlands. It's all over the city. It's on the east side. It's on the south side. It's something that two years ago when I ran, I probably talked Corey's ear off about it, trying to get the um, cats under control. It's great to look at an ordinance to help correct that, but unless you are able to operationalize and police that ordinance, it's not going to do any good. So we do need to look at a way to start controlling the cat population. Um, Corey, I know, has looked at numerous opportunities. There's a charitable organization in Columbus <coughs> that's called Colony for Cats, but it takes a lot of money because the population is so huge. It's not just about feral cats. It is about people who let their cats out. Um, I had neighbors that did the same thing. Yes. So, you know, until we find a way to control both sides of the, pe of the spectrum, we're going to continue to have the problem. Thank you, Ms. Dana. Yes, Mr. Hall. Uh, yes, Mr. President, do we have a committee where this 
particular issue would fit, or is it possible that we could? Wall committee. Um, you want to chair the cat committee? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think maybe having an ad hoc committee that would explore this issue and bring some I, recommendations back to city council I, would be a good thing. I think that's a fine suggestion. I would suggest that the law committee uh, is probably the committee where, where this would fall into, mm -hmm. or if we feel there are ordinances on the books, same code <laughs> enforcement. Um, you want to be the cat committee person? Well. <laughs> so I happen to be on law committee and code enforcement. Great. <laughs> and I, when Becky first came on council, I mean, that's the cap issue is how we first met. And that's when I started coming or being requested to come to code enforcement meetings. So that's when I threw out exactly what I'm going to say to everyone here. And I hope that I don't make it a long thing but it is it is a hot button topic um, from I'll start from the Humane Society standpoint I, I've been the director there for nine years now and I never thought that a private nonprofit that does as much as we do for the county in the county for the city we would ever get cussed out like we get cussed out because of a uh, a cat problem that realistically has been caused by <coughs> the entire community so it, it gets a little frustrating it gets a little draining um, I I put together some numbers I mean we had a great conversation with some neighbors in River Valley Highlands uh, on Friday um, there are things that we do to help but I feel I feel that Everyone seems to forget that the Humane Society is a private nonprofit, and it is not. We were established, and ORC even establishes humane societies in the counties to to handle abuse and neglect situations. Now, the definition can differ from one person to the next on abuse and neglect, but as we see it, um, rounding up stray cats is not what we are intended to do not what we're mandated to do um, are we willing to help absolutely um, but it, it's it's a money issue um, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna I, I'm gonna explain that as simple as this because I don't we we vet all of our animals that come in we handle if if LPD calls and there's been a cat hit by a car or a dog hit by a car and it's two in the morning we go out and we get it if we can't find the owner we handle those medical expenses and the medical expenses for us are not free um, so that's the biggest biggest thing to to get across but first thing that we did it started in august 2014 we i, I wrote a grant we got a grant to fix feral cats trap neuter return okay the cat problem is not going to go away if we fix every cat in the city they're still going to get returned to where we trapped them. They're still going to poop in your bushes. They're still going to pee in your mulch. That's just the reality of it. So 2014 to the end of 2016, we used grant money and Humane Society funds to fix 1,600 stray cats. Most of those were in the city of Lancaster. We did 604 months on the west side of town. Okay? So with those numbers... I'm going to read to you our intake numbers for the last five years, okay? This is after we did the TNR program and then after it stopped. So we started TNR in 2014, ran it all the way through 15, all the way through 16. Our cat intake, we brought in 373 cats in 2015. We brought in 421 in 2016. TNR stopped. 2017 we brought in 504, 2018 we brought in 478, 2019 we are on pace to bring in 541. The reason I bring those numbers up is TNR does work in terms of controlling the population. So everybody gets fixed, the, the numbers will go down. Right now it's no one's, they're, they're small organizations and just so you know, 80% of what we intake, whether it's dogs or cats of the Humane Society, is from the city of Lancaster. All right, we service Fairfield County, but 80% of our intake is from here. Um, so in those five years, we have brought in, we have an intake of 
over 2,300 cats. Um, but we offer low cost spay and neuter monthly. All right. So in five years through that program, we fix another 2,000 cats. So you're talking um, besides the intake with the intake, the TNR, and our spay and neuter, we have fixed almost 6,000 cats in the last five years. Let's say 80% of those are from town. <coughs> Over 4,700 cats we've fixed, and we still have a huge problem. I have right now we have 72 cats and kittens in our care. It's it's ridiculous. We had so let's move past that, and I'm gonna. T there's there's no other way to do it so tnr is the is the most sense if we brought forth legislation that says hey this would be a great opportunity we don't need legislation for the humane society to operate tnr but i really think the city needs to consider do we pitch in so we show that we're putting forth some effort there's no way go ahead let me just interrupt and ask when you ran the program how much did that cost so we spent about sixty thousand dollars to fix that sixteen hundred cats. So about thirty eight dollars a piece. Now, but that's not including. I mean, that's that was us going out and trapping. What we would do is we loan traps out. We ran it on a voucher program, so you could come get a voucher, fix your your cat. But you know, the people that were doing that understood what was going on. But then even so, when we were we put out notices on the west side. I mean, Becky walked door to door helped us out with notices. We had people calling and threatening to kill us if we trapped and neutered their cat. We had our traps sabotaged. I mean, it's so it's a hot button issue either way you go, right? So I'm, I'm okay with discussing legislation and law committee, whatever, I think, but it's a money issue. There's, if we do some kind of legislation, it's a, it becomes an enforcement piece. Who is going to enforce? As the Humane Society, if we license cats, which I, I think they should be, don't get me wrong, but if we license cats, that means the city has to go pick them up. Who's the city going to ask to run that program? They're probably going to ask the Humane Society. And if we go pick up, let's say, 3,000 stray cats a year, 95% of those cats will tear your face off. They're not able to be adopted they're not going to be able to be in a shelter setting so then we're going to have to euthanize them and the humane society is not the one that's going to euthanize 2,000 cats a year so good luck with, <laughs> with i mean it's just a problem i don't think we're trying to kick the rock down the road but it's a the state doesn't want to touch it with a 10-foot pole that's right yeah. so yeah. They've kind of left it on everybody else. And I have plenty of examples of different pieces of legislation that other cities use or they've tried to to eliminate the stray cat population, and it's, a, it's not an easy task. Well, I appreciate that background and information, Mr. Schoonover, and um, I'll just say that as you've sort of outlined it, it's, it's a, a major problem, I think, not just in the city, but in the county. Yeah. And that um, within the city, just because something's challenging or difficult or, you know, is going to require resource probably isn't a good enough reason for us not to consider it, right? And right. so I, I don't think that just because this is tough that we should kick it down the road, as you're right. suggesting. So it would be my recommendation. And I don't want to make these recommendations only for this to go and die in a committee. But, Mr. Groff, we're going to ask that you and the law committee take a look at this um, if you would be willing to add this to your agenda I, I would be willing to do that but uh, I also think uh, we need to look at it through code enforcement or possibly work together on it I think that'd be uh, fine. in the sense that there is no perfect I can think up a perfect he was, he was waiting for 20 minutes so, so he didn't finish talking to say Mr. Groff, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to task you with this, if you'll please, and ask that you would consider pulling the law committee and code enforcement together, if that's what you think is best, and to come back um, in, in our meeting in August at one of the two with some sort of report of where we're at as you move forward, even if it's just that you've started meeting, um, so that we can make sure that, that 
we get regular reports on it as we move forward. Ma'am, I want to thank you for coming. I know this is frustrating. Any jokes up here are only meant to lighten the mood. It's not to denigrate your situation. I know it's been frustrating and challenging for you. Um, I've had some conversations with uh, some folks that have been working with you and the neighbors, and we appreciate you being here. I'm not sure that we can address your issue immediately or comprehensively, but, but we will continue to have these discussions to see what can be done, and we really appreciate you being here. Thank you. Anyone else want to add to this discussion before we move on? All right. Any further new business tonight? All right. If not, we'll ask the clerk to read our regularly scheduled meeting. We have a regular meeting scheduled July 15th at 6.30 p.m. and a meeting August 12th at 6.30 p.m. We do have a special meeting on July 29th at 6.30 here in Council Chambers. Um, to cover temporary resolution 8719, temporary re resolution 8819, temporary ordinance 1119, and temporary ordinance 1219. Upcoming uh, committee meetings Safety Committee, June 26 at 7 30 a.m. in the second floor conference room of City Hall. IT Telecom, July 11th at 7 30 a.m. at the conference room, second floor City Hall. Service, July 12th at 7.30 a.m. at the Gas Department Conference Room. Finance Committee, July 15th at 6 p.m. here in Council Chambers. And finally, Economic Development, July 25th at 7.30 a.m. in the second floor conference room. Thank you very much. Are there any bills this evening? Yes, I have a bill for $4,872.35 to PNC uh, for publication of legislation. Great day in the morning. Mr. <laughs> President, I'd like to make a motion to pay the bills. Second. Bill. That was a big one. <laughs> yeah. have a motion is second to pay the bills. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. <coughs> the motion carries. Is there need for an executive session this evening? If not, a motion to adjourn is in order. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Second. We have a motion and a second to adjourn the meeting. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. The motion is adjourned. We will not be back together before the 4th of July, so uh, may you and your family have a very safe and happy Independence Day. We are adjourned. Have a great night.